What's up, guys? We are going to make a Murray cod fly today. So, just got off work and I figured I'd make a video on making a Murray cod fly. So, my last video was a top water, and uh, this time we're going to be doing. Um, um, definitely not a top water. That's what we're gonna be doing. Definitely not a top water. Um, basically, this is a heavier cod fly, and um, I've caught some beautiful cod on here, and I've also caught some uh, yellow bellies, some pretty big yellow bellies on this bad boy. Um, so this is a, a absolute harvested fly looks like so this is what we're going for today um yeah as you can tell it's pretty pretty worn down eh uh, it's been definitely been through some battles um I'll end up still using this uh, I'll just probably put some more glue on a little bit and then touch her up and then send it again but Anyways, we're going to make one of these again, and I'll tell you what you'll need. So, I've got some, we're going to make a different color of that today. Um, you're going to need some emu feathers. I got hand-picked from a fence. And so I got these colors, I got the saddle hackle, strung saddle hackle. I got this color. And this color, beautiful. So, don't know what colors are gonna be with what. I just kind of just go with the flow at the moment. When I do tie, I kind of just it's kind of how I feel. So those are the feathers there. Um, it's pretty simple, really. You can add more stuff, but I don't. Uh, I tend not to do that. We the dumbbell eyes. We're gonna use some big old dumbbell eyes. Yeah. So what I like about these are, yeah, they're heavy as, but you cast them with a 10 weight anyways. So you can use this with sinking line and floating line. I find people go, oh, you, you know, it's uh, floating line. You use this. Say if you don't want, say if you're a person that fly fishes and, and doesn't have all these types of lines. I find that, um, Stuff like this works really well. So, like, if you have a if you have a floating line, and you don't and you want to send that fly down, you know, like four or five feet, pretty fast. You know, you just make a heavier fly, I find, and you, when you cast it, she goes down deep pretty fast, and uh, and so you don't have to consistently change uh, fly lines, or you don't have to have you know three, four setups or two setups with you. You can just have one setup if you or a, se or a semi sink fly line, you know, where you can toss a floating uh, top water on or a sinking. This works really well because this will bring floating line the tip of it down a bit too. So if you have like a, a twelve foot or like a, a ten foot leader, you can sink this down eight feet like easy. Um, I just, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just started making these ones. I've actually, this, I make these and I just find they're very successful. And and they get down to the bottom, or not the bottom, they just get down faster. Uh, so anyways, um, and then eyes right here. I'm going to do 8.5 mils. Some beautiful eyes on them, you know, quality eyes. I've got a little bit bigger eyes. Because uh, the other fly, uh, the caught the uh, top water, is a um, seven mil. So we're gonna do that. So first, we're basically going to um yeah. So I just I kind of just started. So so if you wanted. It's not, it's not, there's no set rails like I've said before. There's, there's no like time flies in fly fishing. And the other day, there's no set rails. It's kind of it's a bit thinner fly line, but whatever. Just 
Doesn't have to look pretty. Yeah, so I actually like that fly because it does sink pretty fast. And if you want, you can strip her pretty fast. Those fish will chase. So we are going to right when she kind of starts bending and then she's good and then I kind of bring her up here so all right I have to uh, where is that all right so there's a thing I put on I've learned is I put so I'll cut this off. Sorry, it's kind of everywhere right now. But so I put this on my flies, on my wet flies. This might be a little bit too big, um, but it works. So basically, this keeps it off the bottom. So when you drag her on the bottom and you strip her, it keeps the hook off. I'm snagging. I find uh, it's kept me off of uh, snags and logs and and rocks and stuff like that pretty well. Um, I've actually haven't hung up on this at all. Um, so that's what I put on. So that's what we'll be putting on. Um, I use I use some soft steel, like uh, 40 pounds, 40 pound mono, but it's it's a bit thicker. It's pretty thick. So for 40 pounds, this what's the diameter is 0 0.60 mil. So it is pretty thick for uh, just 40 pounds, but but uh, she'll work good. Right on. So basically, cut. What I do right here is I kind of see. I kind of like. See the lip and all that, and it's kind of just, kind of just, uh, guesstimate it, put it there, bend, see if that's the, uh, so that's what I kind of do. And when I do it, I cross. There's no, like I said, there's no set, but when I tie it on. I tie it on like that and it comes over the it comes the line comes in between the cross and then I pinch it and then I just tie it on so this is pretty much what I want and then you just tie it like that just do nice long ties really and then you can adjust it too. You can you can adjust it, but that's pretty much that's pretty much what I want really. So basically from here, what I do is I just make sure there's a lot of wraps on this bad boy, because I don't want this getting snagged up and when I pull I don't want it to rip my fly apart so <sighs> yeah so you guys get the gist really for tying it I just tie a lot. I'd rather build one quality fly, one decent fly, than um, cheaping out and worrying about thread and stuff. But when I try, when I make flies, I try to make them because I use them quite a bit. I honestly go out a lot, fly fish or even hunt. I just I like quality things because I do to put them to the test, and I just find sometimes cheaper shit, just kind of cheap, cheaply made stuff. Not even. Not even by like other companies, like by yourself. If you're gonna make something, fucking make it, you know? So that's what, that's what, uh, that I kind of think, but. Anyways, alright. 
what are we gonna do? We're gonna do, so we got that done. Um, it is time to put on the dumbbell eye. So, basically put it on. So I like to put it on, when I put it on, I'll show you, I'll tie it on first. I give it some room. Right here is the uh, the the tip, just a little bit back, pretty much a couple mils, really, just to give yourself some room. And then I just cross thread it like this. Just go. I know you might guys might not be able to see as good, but. cross-thread it and as you do it guys just uh, make sure that you eyeball it and you kind of just readjust it so it's she's nice and straight nice and straight it's pretty simple so yeah it's basically just back and forth I like doing a ton just because the head, they're pretty big heads, so smack them against rocks and shit. So sometimes I'll cross, I'll zigzag back. Fuck sakes, I, re I really wish. So I'll zigzag. When I do it, I'll zigzag. It's, fucking, it's terrible. Had a full day of work, guys. It's a little bit knackered, but let's have some coffee. Let's give me a break. So yeah, so basically, when I tie this thing, let me explain this. When I tie this, when I tie the head on this thing, you you weave it from side to side. You get in between the you get in between the heads, and then every so often, I'll just spin around the the hook. And then weave it around the other side, spin it on the hook, so it kind of anchors. And then you weave it, and then anchors, and you weave it. If you get what I mean, but, um, but yeah, so I, I, I do quite a bit. It's the boring part, obviously. But it's pretty simple. Yeah, cod, cod fishing on the fly rod is it's hard to beat. I think bow hunting beats it, but bow hunting it's it's a uh, it's a different thing itself. Um, can't really comp you can't really compare it really. I go back and forth on the two things, but I buy double the gear, I buy fly fishing gear and bow hunting gear and other fishing gear. It's just gear. The more gear I have more things I can do so all right guys so now we are going to put the emu feathers emu feathers on from the last video you've seen this you guys might have not seen the last video so pick emu feathers right here right on I got a bunch down there so basically when I tie my emu feathers I like to I like to stretch them out, like as in like I like to put in more or less pairs or individuals. I don't like to necessarily just clump them all because I find it kind of makes it ugly. And I don't want an ugly fly. I'm making it, so how do they make it nice? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And then as you do this, so the reason why I like doing individual or a couple at a time, because you can place them. You can place them as you want. You don't have to, you're not clumping them and then just hoping they just kind of go to where you want them. Just remember when you when you tie it, you don't want to get you don't want to tie when it starts going down because the more you tie it going down, the more it's going to push your your tail down. Unless you want your tail down, I don't like my tail to down, but you might want to try something new and tie your tail down. Get a couple longer ones in here too, you know. Some real ratty ones make the cod hunger for some something that looks like it's sick or something. Some ratty emu feathers, but they work fucking good. Look at that. Some rat ratty res tails. That one I'm not using. Yeah, I'm not using that one. Fuck that. I'm good. Two res, too ratty for me. Two res for me. Some beauties here, eh? Look at this. Look at these solid beautiful beauty feathers. These ones are actually kind of I'm not gonna lie, these feathers here that I have right now are kind of the the bottom of the bin kind of barrel uh, feathers, but thought I'd use them up anyways, so you can make them thick. Do you want anything more? Do On. Uh, no. Uh, right here, I got some more here. Right on. Well. And this is all determined on how thick you want to make your tail, really. So sometimes I like to make them real thick, like like pretty bushy. So it's kind of it's okay. It's not really. It's not. Yeah, these feathers are definitely bottom of the bin barrel. I don't even know why I fucking got, got these feathers out. I got better uni feathers, but whatever. Save them for later. I'll end up making more flies anyways in the future. I'll probably, I'll probably make videos of the same one, different colors maybe, who knows. But this is literally because it took me a long time to figure out what kind of like cod, kind of like, in the end of the day, fish will eat, whatever. So look, look at that, look at that thing. But yeah, at the end of the day, fish will kind of just eat whatever, you know. All right, well, so now we are gonna do, we're we gonna do light or dark body. Hmm. I think we'll do uh, dark, maybe with like a bright scarf. Nah, I know that other one's dark. Do bright body with the yeah. I'll do bright body, so we'll use these bad boys here. Right on, beauties, absolute beauties, beautiful feathers. My wife said I should be ordering feathers off of uh, Wish. I think it's called. Cause I buy these from the fly shop I like to order from. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but my buddy ordered some wish feathers. He says they look the same, but I don't think they do. They like just order from a craft store. I don't know, maybe maybe, maybe it's better, but I just I'm good. Definitely ain't doing that. Look at that. So I got this one side. Ah, it's working on this one side right now. Just doing some basic tying. And then I'm going to work on the other side. So I placed two feathers, two of these bad boys, on the 
out on the outside. So I'm placing two of them on the out on each side. And just remember, you can just always cut, just trim. I just consistently trim as I do it, really. When I do these, I, I like to trim it past, like, like quality trim and like, like you're gonna trim your bush, kind of trim, you know? Make her nice and neat. Yeah. And the reason why I like doing that, because look at that, that's clean. Doesn't have, it's not like, doesn't have shit up here. I like that clean. It might just be me, or I just think it's quality, you know, so. I, oh, shit, did I fucking cut that? Just remember, if you do end up cutting some thread, you're not too sure if you cut it or not, you can just always just tie over it. Just keep it to stay. Put it, and plus we're going to be putting glue there anyway, so on that day, it don't matter. So look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Beautiful. All right. So maybe actually, fuck sakes. Am I adding some browns? Let's give her. Let's give her some browns, eh? Might add some of these actually. Let's, let's see. Let's see what she. Let's see what it does. I wasn't gonna, but all right. Let's do two of each side. Add a bit of thickness, you know. What's the worst case that's gonna happen, really? Ooh. So the same thing. And this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim before I get to the head. And I'll go down. Go back down. So when, like, like I said in my previous videos, you guys might not have seen it. Um, when you tie flies, you work backwards. So you figure out what's the base. You always figure out what's around the hook first and you build out. So what you see, uh, see on a fly, it, those are the last steps of fly tying. So just always remember that. You're always, you're always working backwards. So how, so I, okay, I'll, I'll, nah, I'll just, I'll just fucking show you. I'm trying to explain it in my head, this ain't working. So I'll tie it, so I start. So I'll start tying halfway down the the, fly, uh, the hook, because the hook's right here. Halfway, the head's right here. I'll start tying halfway down and I'll move my way up. And then I'll cut. Just so it doesn't get, I didn't just do the ones because I forgot, but so it doesn't get towards the head. And then when you do it, you work your way backwards. So you're always setting yourself up to, to do stuff like that. So you always, you always tie, and then you always tie backwards, you know? So how it's like, look at that beauty. So yeah, so basically like that. Um, what are the hackle do I have? Do I want to toss anything else on? Probably just a scarf for that. Yeah, probably just a scarf. I don't really want to too, much, too many different colors, really. I think a brown scarf. Uh, yeah, brown scarf. So we got that. Um, so we're going to add a scarf now. So we're taking three hackles. Yeah, three of these bad boys. And you basically put them together. And you just tie them on and pull them until you see the tips and give it a little bit more tie. There you go. So what I do is I tie where the where I think the scarf is gonna go. I just tie her up for it like that, just out of the way. So like this. And you just wrap her around. Get that scarf going. 
absolute beauty. Look at that. And then when it kind of starts thickening out the, the feather, that's when you tie. Pinch it back. I just pinch this back a bit. And then I cut it. Make sure you don't cut the uh, Cut your uh, thread. So yeah, it's just trimming. Even in the bottom, I trim. Kind of dark, but that's all I got for now. So yeah, so right here, look at that. That's a scarf right there. That's what I have. You might want to add another scarf. Depends on what you want. You might just want one more scarf, just to smooth her off, eh? Or Leave it as that, but when the water hits it, the water will bring this back. It'll fill in that. Um, looks like a tasty cod fly though, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of dark. Well, you might just want just the head and just, that's it. Cause you can add another scarf here if you want. You can just add a just to fill her in, just just one saddle hackle. Just one raggedy one, as a scarf one. Kind of a raggedy one, so use her up. Same thing, just I like to test it and pull it till she's real nice, real nice and tight. Alright. Twist it around just to fill in that gap, that little. And you're not going, you don't have to necessarily maximize the amount of feathers. The, 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 the amount of feather you're going to be using on that thing, you know? Like, I just tied, I just put this on here. This is how much I used out of the feathers. So, I took this much off. I used, I used quite a bit, but I usually cut it to that. Because then it starts getting thick and then, um, starts getting thick and then, uh, it gets annoying to play around with, you know? So, at this point, we're pretty much, we're kind of done. With, like, the main stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch this back, peel back the feathers, and just tie in between there. Just get a nice and thick amount of thread and then I'll probably do a little bit more of that. Just, just kind of finishing that off really, you know. Sweet, right on, that's a beautiful fly. I love that. So at this time, just basically tie it. So basically what I do is I take my fingers and I just kind of wrap the thread. Cause you have tools like, you have tools like this, I ain't gonna fucking use that. I've used it a couple times. I'm good. It comes in handy probably for me a few flies, but but I just basically take two fingers, put that down, so then there's a loop. There's literally just a loop in between my two fingers of the line and then I um yeah, I just hope that uh more people get into 
fly fishing in Australia, you know, um, for Murray Cod. They do, they do, there's trout fishing, obviously, but I just, in certain places in the world, I'll, I'll fly fish a trout, like, uh, you know, back home in BC or, or certain spots in Canada to fly fish or I'd trout fish and like fly fish or trout and other parts of other countries. But here I'm good for now. I would just to, just to do it, but I like my cod fly fishing. So we are going to glue. So that's tied. So right now, we're gonna glue this. So I'm gonna glue the top right here. And then it's gonna put that, not glue. Well, you can use glue if you want. I'm gonna use UV resin. You don't have to get it all at once. You can you can kind of so I gotta put glue in between there or UV resin. Oh shit! Don't wanna shine it on my. That's what I do. To so UV resin that up. And this fly is pretty easy to make, really. So. Kind of dark in here, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, I just kind of cloud it up to so it's pretty much all the threads are covered. You know, maybe a little bit back of the neck. I also do the bottom, same thing, twist the fly upside down. And then I do the bottom. So same thing. Nice clump. And also too, it, uh, this UV resin, when you glue it, it actually uh, makes uh, the weedless part. So then it sticks to the hook a bit better. That uh, should be good. So this fly is pretty much done. But one thing we're missing are the eyes. So we're just gonna toss those on real quick. Glue them. You know, so people just go all just tossing the eyes. Well, you can do that if you want, but I'm not. So I put the eyes on. As you can see, I put the eyes on. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the eye you can put it on that if you want. But when you do that, you want to make sure that you take something pointy and you kind of spread that glue around the hole because the whole purpose is to cover the, the eyeball. And it spreads it all around because you want it, you don't want to put it on that because there's no purpose of doing that. You want it so then the eye is glued to the dumbbell. If you want to add more, you, you can make it solid. I just do because I don't like my eyes falling off. It just, it looks raggedy. So. And do the other one. I find you can't find these dumbbell eyes anywhere. Um, you kind of have to search for them a little bit. If places do have them, they don't usually last for very long or something. It just it seems like that, so. 
but so same thing with this one put glue on it and just basically take some and then just basically it's that deal let's go like that around the eye and then it kind of just spreads it around and then I just zap her with UV and it's pretty much it it's pretty much a fly right here there you go so instead of going to spend 30 bucks on a fly you can just make your own or you can just invent your own kind of fly that you can put to the test and use and see if it works and or you can just buy it I buy flies all the time too still when I feel lazy I don't really want to make a certain fly but so yeah right here beautiful look how beautiful that is Sorry guys, I wasn't, um, I don't know, I was just tired today, I was fucking exhausted. Figured I'd, I just figured I'd make a video, you know, just wanting to, uh, share the love of fly fishing with cod, but, I don't know, today was just kind of, a, it's a fucking muck show today, you know, but. Beautiful. Right on guys, well. Hope you guys enjoy this. Hope more people are getting uh, into fly fishing for cod because it's absolutely awesome. So, all right, guys. Well, all the love and yeah. See you next video or such. I think next video I might be doing chittle deer or something um, with my, with Sarah. So. Probably gonna go for pigs again because it's fucking unreal. But I want to go for chittle deer since we have we found some land to do it. So bowhunt for some chittle or axis depends on where you are in the world of how you kind of see them. So right on, guys. Take care.